I have been looking forward to this video. I'm gonna share my initial results using Muesli Spot Cream M Plus, including my before and after pictures. If you are not familiar with Muesli, it is an online custom prescription skincare program. I signed up at the beginning of the year and I wanna share my progress so far. I am shooting today's video wearing tinted sunscreen only with no foundation or concealer on the areas of my melasma. Please keep watching. If you are new here, hi, my name is Amy. I'm a registered nurse. I have been managing my melasma for quite a few years, and I finally decided to give Muesli a try. And one of their prescription spot cream formulations can include a hydroquinone strength of 12%. Now, my initial reaction a while back when I first read about Muesli and this 12%, I was like, no, because I just felt like it seemed too high of a percentage. But after seeing some decent results with hydroquinone 6% in, in the past uh, that was prescribed by my local dermatology provider and wanting to see if a higher strength may target the pigment of my very stubborn upper lip area better, I decided to give it a try. Now, before I get to my pictures, if you have melasma and this type of content interests you, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell to be notified of when I post a new video. The pictures are always what people like to see, but please continue watching after I show my pictures so I can share a bit about this initial journey along with my feedback. Now, although it is a customized treatment plan, I think it will be beneficial to take you through my Spot Cream M Plus routine over the past four months. Now remember, not everyone will have the same experience or results with any treatment. And I usually wear a foundation and or concealer on my melasma patches while shooting my videos. But today, uh, this is tinted sunscreen only, as I mentioned. And as with all my videos, I will link the sunscreen I am wearing in the description box below. Now keep in mind, this is only my first 16 weeks of my Muesli treatment plan. No phase is ever a one and done. It is a process, as you all know. There is no cure for melasma, and it is all about managing and attempting to fade and maintain that fading as best as possible. Now, with that said, here are my pictures taken the day I started the Spot Cream M Plus back in January. My M Plus formulation included tretinoin 0.05%, hydroquinone 12%, kojic acid 6%, and niacinamide 2%, and hydrocortisone 2.5%. And in these front, left, and right pictures, you can see my melasma on the sides of my face and above the upper lip area. Here are my pictures taken at 12 weeks, which was at eight weeks of daily application. I eased into it, as I will talk about in just a bit. Now, some improvements in these pictures, but as I've mentioned in previous videos, and I know a lot of you can relate, uh, I can tell when the pigment of my melasma has faded, even if it is just a small amount, just by how much easier it is to conceal it with makeup, which is what I was experiencing. In fact, I was expecting these pictures to show up looking better than they do. Looking at these pictures, I can see the most fading on the sides of my face, but that stubborn <laughs> above the lip area, there is improvement, but very slight. Keep in mind, I never expect any uh, treatment to miraculously fade my melasma completely. And here are my pictures taken at 16 weeks, which was at 12 weeks of daily application. Now comparing these to the start of using the Spot Cream M Plus, you will see the fading and overall improvement in the appearance of my melasma patches. And in these side-by-side -side pictures, I can see the most fading of the pigment here on the left side. And there's also a decent amount of fading on the right side. And even though I was hopeful of more fading of my melasma mustache, the appearance is improved. And as I mentioned before, I am basing this on the ease of concealing it with tinted sunscreen or makeup, more so than just by looking at the pictures alone. So what was my Muesli journey like these past four months? Well, since I had never used hydroquinone above 6%, I introduced it slowly over four weeks before I advanced to nightly. I check out my videos about getting started with Muesli that I will link below. So part of the program is getting assigned a dermatologist who then prescribes the treatment plan. She recommended that I start gradually, which I did over the course of one month. Uh, as recommended, I applied a small pea-sized amount to the areas of my melasma only, followed by moisturizer. Uh, this is for nighttime use only. I applied once a week for the first week, then twice a week for a week, and then three times. And then at the fourth week, I advanced to every other evening for one week. 
Now it was then when I started the daily application and since I advanced slowly, initially I did not experience much uh, redness, dryness, and hardly any peeling. Now at week four when I advanced to uh, every evening. I happened to be in Arizona that week. Now, if you follow my channel, you may have seen my sun hats video that I shot while there. And I definitely started experiencing some uh, redness, dryness, and a little peeling from starting the daily application and the dry air of Arizona, which I was not used to. So I amped up my moisturizer application and used moisturizing sunscreens. Now, Muesli recommends uh, using CeraVe and um, Aquaphor as moisturizers, and that was perfect because I always have uh, these on hand. Now, I like applying Aquaphor uh, to the corners of my mouth and just below my nose to minimize the tretinoin affecting those areas. Now, on evenings uh, when my skin felt a little irritated, I applied the spot cream after moisturizer. I only had to do that a few evenings as I was adjusting. Now, another important thing I did was to wait about five minutes after cleansing to allow the skin to dry completely because uh, products can get absorbed more uh, when the skin is damp. And with products like tretinoin, uh, this may cause an increase in irritation. Now this is why I like to apply moisturizer in the morning onto damp skin. I want all the benefits um, of the moisturizer, especially during uh, an adjustment period like this. Now another muesli recommendation is to wait a couple of minutes after applying the spot cream uh, to let it settle before applying moisturizer. The Muesli app recommends checking in periodically during the first 60 days to report the amount of redness, peeling, and if you're starting to see any fading. Then tips are provided to help along the way, such as uh, tips about moisturizer and hydration for redness and dryness, the importance of sunscreen, and encouragement that less is more not to apply more than recommended. And one of the most important tips, in my opinion, is to be patient. Now, after a full month of daily application, um, I felt I had started tolerating the uh, spot cream pretty well and I felt it was a good time to reintroduce my morning vitamin C serum which I had stopped. Actually I stopped all my skincare steps when I started this spot cream um, other than gentle uh, cleanser and moisturizer and of course sunscreen. And this certainly simplified my previous multi-step routine. It was definitely more cost effective. Um, my dermatologist recommended specifically holding off on any personal or prescription retinol, vitamin C, glycolic acid, lactic acid, salicylic acid, and benzoyl peroxide until the spot cream is tolerated. So the vitamin C was the only one of those products that applied to my previous routine. But after a few mornings of applying the vitamin C, I thought my skin or melasma wasn't quite agreeing with it. I don't want to say it looked darker, but I did feel like it seemed to halt the progress I thought I had started seeing. Now I had never had a problem with my vitamin C serum before and my thought is that it just had to do with my skin adjusting to the tretinone with the high dose of hydroquinone. So I stopped the vitamin C and will reintroduce it back into my routine when I take a break from the M+. Now after two months of daily application I started using my next fill of spot cream M+, which was the same formulation but without the hydrocortisone. My prescription treatment was to fill the M+, with hydrocortisone for only one time. Each shipment lasts about 60 days. I use the auto ship program where refills come every two months. Uh, the spot cream is freshly compounded by the pharmacy then mailed directly and edits uh, to those ship dates can be made if needed. Now hydrocortisone is a topical corticosteroid and it can work together with hydroquinone and tretinoin to really target the pigment of melasma and more so to help with minimizing potential irritation. Now my treatment plan indicated that hydrocortisone is for short term use only because longer term use can cause a thinning of the skin and other unwanted side effects. Now I have to say I missed the steroid. A few days into the switch, I was needing to be very heavy handed with the nighttime moisturizer and some nights going for a good layer of aquaphor. Now everyone reacts and adjusts differently during this course of treatment. A redness, peeling, and irritation are not uncommon. I definitely experienced, you know, moderate dryness, minor irritation, and not too much peeling. Overall, I am very satisfied with my results so far. Keep in mind, this first four months is not my complete treatment plan, and now it is time for me to take at least a two-month break from hydroquinone. My next phase of my treatment is the non-hydroquinone spot cream called HQ Free. Mine is formulated with tranexamic acid 6%, azelaic acid 10%, kojic acid 6%, and niacinamide 2.5%. And as I mentioned, I will be incorporating back into my routine my vitamin C serum. Now, when it comes to the gold standard hydroquinone, 
ketoconazole. Most dermatologists recommend, uh, generally recommend, using it for three to four months and then taking a break for two to three months. Will I go back to hydroquinone? Right now, I plan to, and I anticipate that I will see even more fading with that second round. Now, Muesli has a hydroquinone formulation using 6%, and I'm considering going down to that strength. For now, I'm gonna see how I do with the HQ Free, and honestly, I'm not convinced that I saw that much more of an improvement with 12% over the 6% that I've used in the past. And I think my hesitation is that I never felt like my skin fully adjusted to the tretinoin with the high dose of hydroquinone. Now, especially when I went to the M plus without the hydrocortisone. Now, one of the tricky things about looking at results and comparing treatments is that melasma is stubborn, it's chronic, and mine seems ever changing. I think it is hard to compare treatments because there can be potentially so many other factors that come into play which affect how melasma responds. And I'm talking about any treatment um, and the variables during the course of that treatment, such as you know, the amount of sun exposure you might be getting, heat exposure, hormones, medications you might be taking, and other skincare products you might be using. But as always, my plan is to maintain my current results and approach managing my melasma to improve its appearance based on how it is doing today as best as I can. And now I'll be doing that with the help of the HQ Free Spot Cream. If more Muesli updates interest you, please let me know and give this video a thumbs up and share it with anyone who may benefit. I hope you found this video informative. Please comment below if you have a Muesli experience to share. And oh, I'll be posting a video soon about Muesli sunscreen. So look for that one. Remember for any treatment to be successful, this stubborn skin condition requires diligent use of sunscreen and sun avoidance measures. And I know it's a challenge, but also avoiding heat when possible. Thank you to my current subscribers and as always wishing everyone good health and thank you for taking the time to invest in your face. Bye.